So someone asked me in a comment on one of the, my videos to talk about my own experiences from when I was really, really struggling with procrastination. And of course, there's all those feelings that come with that of unworthiness and shame and guilt and stress, right? So, you know, I'm someone who has made a lot of videos. I, I wrote a book about procrastination. And I think one of the things that helps people kind of resonate with it is the fact that I struggled personally with this issue uh, to a huge degree. I would be what I would classify now as having a chronic problem with procrastination. It was really one of the main issues, the big problems I had in my life. So I'm going to talk here about like, what did that look like for me? What kind of problems was I running into with it? Because when we do have this issue and it's not resolved, it does lead to problems, okay? So an example would be, well, let me just start off from the very beginning. This issue kind of showed up for me more so in uh, secondary school or high school, as it's known in America. And in high school, really, everything I did was done at the last minute. Okay, everything. I don't think I ever did anything proactively ahead of time. And this was the thing that persisted all the way through my, my high school experience. And of course, you know, when you're a younger person, you have people in your life that are kind of keeping you accountable to a certain degree. So it doesn't become that big of an issue, although it is. I mean, there's huge amounts of energy I expended worrying about things in conflict with myself. I should be doing this, but I'm not doing it. So my entire experience in, in school, really, in second level school, was really kind of mired by this entire issue, right? But really when I got into university is when it started to show up uh, to be a really chronic issue. So again, every single assignment I did was late or now I did manage to get them done, but it was never to the standard that I wanted it to be. It was always, I was just me doing enough to get by really is what I was doing. Often I did get in, into trouble for not having it done. I'd get into, I'd take shortcuts, I would, I would, again, I, it would be late, it would be substandard, it would be poor work. Now, somehow, again, I managed to get through that, but, you know, it was showing up, the, the, this issue in my life, it's not just like it's this one issue, right? I remember, for instance, a, a friend of mine, I had a big issue with, like, following through with plans. Any plan I would make, I would invariably fail to follow through on it. I remember one day a friend of mine, he, he said to me, um, look, tomorrow we're going to get up early, we're going to go in and we're going to do some work. And he made me promise to him that we, we, we would do that. And I was to meet him there the next day. And you know, in that moment when I was having that conversation with my friend, I was like, yep, I will do that. I will be there tomorrow. And in the moment when I was making that promise, I was saying what I wanted to be true rather than what I knew would be true. And that's kind of a typical thing in procrastination. We say, and we almost convince ourselves that what we want to be true is the truth. But of course, the next day came and I completely blew it off. I didn't do it. And, you know, I, that little, little things like that would keep happening again and again. Again, everything was done so par for me. I remember I even started to go for like interviews and stuff for jobs and things. And again, I would go there, but like pr preparation work for the interview, I would do late. It would always be just do something, but never actually doing my best for it. So it would start to like really show up in my life and, and have a negative impact on opportunities for me, really good opportunities. I, I think I probably missed dozens of really good opportunities in my past because I was dealing with this, this issue, okay? Now, I'm not trying to scare you here. I'm gonna to get to the point of, the point is yes, procrastination does have a negative impact in, on our lives, but when we overcome it, things just change instantly, okay, in your life. And you don't really care, like I don't really care about those missed opportunities now. The real great thing for me is that it's, it's an issue that is in the past, and the personal growth that has come for me in actually putting that issue into my past, okay? 
moving forward and not having it as an issue anymore shows, I guess, that I'm growing as a person. That's really what we're here to do is to grow as people, not necessarily about any of the opportunities that we miss. Are you growing as a person is the real key issue here. So problems with saying I was going to do things, wouldn't do them, missed opportunities, everything was done subpar. And, but the real problem with all the years of procrastination that I had was I didn't feel good about myself at all. My self-esteem was rock bottom, really. Okay, again, I would get things done, but it was never really what I wanted to do or, or I was capable of doing. But it was this constant pattern of saying I'm going to do things, even just to myself, and not doing them. It has this terrible effect of undermining. Uh, I, had, I was undermining myself every time I did that. And of course, the more you undermine yourself, the, the worse your self-esteem, the lower your confidence becomes, the lower your self-trust becomes. So I had no trust in myself. My confidence and self-esteem were rock bottom. But it's so interesting to look now and see, well, you know, it's, it's why when I look at videos about like how to build confidence, you know, and you do this and you do that, really the, the whole key, as far as I'm concerned, in building my, my self-confidence and my self-esteem was to stop undermining it. I didn't actually have to do anything. I just had to stop doing something. And uh, isn't that a kind of a relief? You know, oh, if I just stop doing that, it automatically improves. And of course it did. You know, my self-esteem and my confidence went, went way up when I did resolve this issue. So in college, I kind of realized, okay, this is a problem. I think I had actually suffered with it so much that I got to the point where I was like, I think it was more the self confidence issue and the self-esteem issue that prompted me to try and change this issue okay now of course i did like what everybody else does and i start to look to self-help videos and self-help books and some of them you know i would read those those books and it was like um it was all kind of on the discipline model right you have to develop discipline you have to do this and I remember I would like try and make these drastic changes. I would try and become an early riser. That was a thing I was obsessed on for a while. Of course, that didn't work because really all I was doing was more control over my own behavior, which uh, if you know anything about my approach is, is not really what it's all about. And the other thing was, you know, I would try to implement this change to become an early riser. And then, of course, I was going to be this great productive guy. And I'd wake up late. And then I had this other issue of procrastin or of perfectionism. And I was like, oh, well, I screwed up. What's the point now for the day? The day is ruined. So I would go into this self-defeating kind of talk. And well, tomorrow I'll try again, I guess. But that day was a write-off. So it was really this massive perfectionism thing that I had. So I kind of had to give up on this whole idea of uh, early rising. Okay, because that was getting me nowhere. But these self-help books were not helping me either. Okay, this self-discipline thing. You see, my whole problem was I was very ambitious and I actually wanted to do well. The discipline or the, the desire to do well was not missing in me. Okay, in fact, it was this self-bullying stuff that I had been doing for all these years. That was the real problem. And I didn't need to be told to be more disciplined. I didn't need the tough love approach. Okay, now I think... Maybe some people need the tough love approach. Maybe I think if at all, and if at all people need the tough love, it's maybe when they're younger and they need to be really just given some, some, some boundary issues about things, but with behavior, what's acceptable and what isn't. But at a certain point, you know, we all are on the same page that, yeah, discipline is important. Yeah, but like reading the self-help book that was telling me that was not telling me anything I didn't already know. In fact, it was actually making me feel worse about myself. So that wasn't working. And so I really, I had got to the point where I was like, okay, look, I'm struggling here. I've been struggling for a long, long time with this issue. I really want to find out what the issue is. Now, I remember the first thing I came across. Somebody said that the whole problem with procrastination is that you believe you have to do things. Now at the time, that idea went into my mind and I found it really, really, it kind of opened my mind a bit. 
Now it didn't change the, the, the behavior at that point for me, but it had put a little seed in there. It was, it was this kind of different approach that I hadn't heard before. It was, it, was, it was kind of pointing to this inner critic or this bully that was really, really driving the behavior and the have to terms that it uses to intimidate us into uh, behavior. So I don't have to do things. I don't have to do anything was this kind of idea, this philosophy that was, was beginning to be, it was a new philosophy for me. So that was the philosophy part was kind of changing for me a little bit. And then Neil Fiore's book, the now habit, the, the, he, he introduced this concept. I remember reading that book and I was almost at the point where I was going to give up. I was like, I'm fed up with these self-help books now. Nothing is working here. But his, his book was like, you have things entirely upside down and backways if you have a problem with procrastination. Your whole issue is that you're focusing on productivity and discipline and, and achievement. And you're actually secretly resisting or pushing away or not liking or judging the need to relax and have fun without an experience of guilt. Now, when I heard that, it was like, okay, what does that look like on a practical level? So I started to implement a lot of the things Neil Fiora talks about, scheduling in guilt-free play, and now the issue was starting to actually clear up, or I was actually starting to see real progress with this. I was actually enjoying myself more. I was feeling more valued as a person because work and achievement and the various projects that I had to work on were no longer the sole focus of my life, which they had been, even though I wasn't doing very well on them and I was struggling with them so much. Now there was more balance with, actually, you know what the priority here is for me to relax and uh, experience the, the, the enjoyable parts of life without it being tainted by feelings of guilt. So that was really working. And another thing then, I started to write on it myself, I started to journal on it, and I started to write down little insights I was having about the whole thing. I started to do a lot of research on procrastination. Um, I was studying psychology, so I figured I may as well study something that uh, I'm, I'm kind of experiencing. So. Then I started to develop this thing about developing trust with myself. And this was all about, okay, I have a tendency here. I've noticed all throughout my, my life that I keep making elaborate promises to myself and maybe I'm not following through on many of those and maybe most of those, sometimes all of those promises I was breaking. So then the tendency became, okay, if I can develop more trust in myself, I really feel much more secure in myself. So I really start to watch, okay, where am I making promises? And I started to realize I'm making way too many promises, even just to myself. So that I started to make very, very few promises to myself. And all promises I made from that point on, that period on, were very, very small promises, okay? Because I had been undermining myself for such a long period of time. And because they were small, doable, achievable promises, this trust in myself started to develop. And another thing I started to do was to realize, okay, there is this thing about momentum. If I can get going, if I can convince my nervous system to cooperate and move forward with me, then I'll really be getting places with this whole issue. I'll really be actually enjoying my life more and actually moving forward on my goals. And I started to develop this thing about um, developing a kind of a now or never attitude, which was much more about Look, if I make a promise and I don't follow through on it, self-trust is just so important to me that if that happens, I, I have to just step away and regain some perspective on things, okay? So anytime I did break a promise, I would say, okay, this is essentially important here. What just happened? Let me step away now from this. I'm not, I'm not gonna torture myself with indecision or procrastination for the rest of the day. I'm actually just proactively stepping away from this now. And I'll try again tomorrow. And I would go into reflection. What happened with that? Did I take on too big of a task? Did I, did I overpromise something to myself? Was I not giving myself something I needed outside of that work uh, area or that goal? And really from that point on, occasionally I would slip back into procrastination. So I re realized at that point, I really do need to keep these ideas or this new philosophy or these new approaches to personal productivity really front and center in my mind, in my consciousness. 
So I would write a little story for myself or I would write a, a short thing that I could keep just looking at. Now, it wasn't like law of attraction or trying to manifest anything. It was really just to keep my mind focused on a new philosophy because it was an entirely different philosophy to the philosophy of personal productivity I had been carrying for years. So I needed to kind of train myself out of that. And I found that once I started to do that, and it was a very quick thing, a couple of minutes a day, I would just look at these ideas about what's the best way to stay productive without you know this self-discipline stuff it's much more of a compassion-based approach it's it is ambitious you know there's there's the i definitely want to achieve things part of it but also um balance that with a self-compassion so i started to to really integrate that story into my lifestyle and i focused on it and i focused on it more and more not trying to convince myself of anything but just gradually letting those ideas integrate into into myself and really, I just started to notice I haven't procrastinated for a long time. In fact, I can't remember the last time I procrastinated. All my work was simple. I became super consistent with things. There was no more drama. There was no more stress. There were no more late night deadlines. It just became so easy. And the thing was, I was having fun now in my life. I was actually making time for things away from this uh, goal focused stuff which i hadn't really been doing up until that point sure i was doing the things that were enjoyable or fun but they were always tainted by feelings of guilt and unworthiness before or low self-esteem that was all gone now so really a part of it for me was i I wrote the book afterwards when I finished in, in, in university and it was, I had to just talk to, so I was, I was now practicing psychotherapy and I was realizing so many people, you see, I hadn't heard many therapists talking about the issue of procrastination up to that point. And I was like, you know, that was something that really bothered me in my life. That was a real, real problem for me. In fact, it was a huge problem for me. There was so much pain that I went through because of it. Now it wasn't maybe the type of pain you could point to as a kind of dramatic experience. But it was the, 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 the struggle and conflict I had 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 been drawn out over so many years. If you added up all that pain, it's like a huge, huge painful problem in my life. So I said, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on this issue because I'm going to tell people that it's not about self-discipline, essentially. It's really much more about balance and self-compassion and developing self-trust with yourself. It's not about pushing yourself. In fact, it's the opposite of that. It's about developing an, underst an understanding of my ability to push myself so hard that I come to a, my nervous system just says, no, and I'm not doing it. And we become very resistant to doing it. So I can honestly say now that uh, I have no issues with procrastination at all. It's such a huge relief. I have no regrets about any of the missed opportunities or the problems I was creating for myself because of that issue. It's because I know the issue is gone. I, and I, when, when I say the issue is gone, it's not like I'm this great person that has overcome something. Very simply, the only thing that changed is I understand the issue now. That's it. That's all we really need to do with this issue is understand what it is and what's driving it. So if you want to check out, here's my little sales pitch at the end here, I guess. My book is available on my, 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 my website for this. And I also have a, a course on it too. I would say probably half the people that come to me for therapy, um, I guess a lot of them resonate with the same problems I was having. And really the work I do with a lot of those people who have this, the same issue that I had is basically just showing them a different way to relate to themselves that's going to allow them to be productive. And it's so surprising to them that it's not the old way. It's not some kind of a, a guilt thing or there's something wrong with me or I need to try harder. It's, it's just different to that. That's it. So those resources are there if you want them. And uh, I think I'll leave it there for today. But I hope that answers that question that that person asked me. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you again in the next video. Take care.